Välkommen till en intervju, en lite längre intervju, lite djupare intervju med Samen Sier och en av spelarna i ÖFK. En av spelarna i ÖFK som har varit i klubben allra längst. Eh, Sam, you have been here for quite a while now. Yep, I think I've been here almost six years or six and a half. Yeah. Something like that, or seven years. Yeah. Long time for a football player. Yeah, it's, it's long time, but... I love the club, you know, so I always feel happy to, to be here and represent this club. So yeah, mm. I feel good and I'm, I'm ready to take the next challenge. You were born uh, 19 of May 1989 in Ghana. Yep. Uh, this uh, spring you will be 31. Yep. Yeah, I'll be 31 in May. So, so yeah, uh, I'm getting old, I guess. So. But once I'm I'm still fit and I'm I'm still like playing, then I'm okay. Cause uh, there are a lot of players who are around 35, 36, 37, 38, and they are still playing, and that shows that they have the strength to to play. So for me, my body feels good, and uh, and I I will play until I can't anymore. So now I'm I'm just gonna play. Tell us a little about uh, when you were growing up in Ghana. How was it? I grew up in Ghana and uh, with my sister and my brother, and uh, I have six stepsisters and then two stepbrothers. So very big family, and uh, it was okay because my dad uh, was a constructor and uh, my mom also uh, work at the market selling fish. So we had a good, a good, uh, good economic, and everything was good. So yeah. Uh, what did you want to be when you were young? When I was young, I, of course, I wanted to be a footballer. You know, that was <laughs> the dream. So at the age of 10, uh, I got a chance to move to a football school, which was right to dream. So they gave me the opportunity to uh, move from Ghana to England and, and go to school and play football at the same time. And from there, I moved to Sweden, Stasson, in 2011. But before you came to Sweden, you went to England. Yeah, before I came to Sweden, I went to England for five years in school. And I was playing football at the same time. And that's where Grand Potter saw me. And uh, when he moved to Ostasson, uh, he invited me to, to come as well. So yeah, it was interesting. Uh, do you re remember uh, when he was looking at you in the, in the practice or? No, I had no idea, you know. <laughs> but when he moved to Ostasson, uh, my coach back in England, uh, he told me that uh, Grand Porter wanna invite me for a trial in Ostasson in Sweden. By then, I know no anything about Sweden. I don't know anything about Sweden. The only thing I know about Sweden was they have Slatan and uh, they have a lot of blonde girls, you know. And then, <laughs> what again? That is cold. That's the only thing I actually know about, about Sweden. Apart from that, nothing. <laughs> and I came and uh, they gave me and my friend, Isaac Shaz, uh, they gave us one week for trials. And then from there, they sent us because we did good. So, yeah, that's the, how it started. The time in England, how was that? My time in England was, was good because uh, I first went to Everton to train with the under-19s. Mm -hmm. And then from there, I went to Newcastle under-19s. And then from there, I went to Fulham under-19s. As well, but because of working permit, I could not be able to uh, to stay for longer, because everything were were very interested to sign me, and uh, they were ready to do everything, the papers and everything, but working permit could not allow me to to stay there. So I rather went to school. I got a scholarship to go to school, mm. and the school paid for everything, you know, my education and um, my food and. My fees, they pay everything. So that was very good for me, you know, because I wanted to stay in England and uh, and play football there. And if the school gave me a chance to do that, then why not? So I went to the school there, and then for five years, and after my school, still I uh, could not get the working permit. So I have to come to Europe, and I ended up in, in Sweden to start my football career. So, but you were very young then. Yeah, I was. I was young, and you know, I just want to play football by then, you know. What did your mom and dad think when you moved to England? My mom and dad were happy for me because uh, I left them at the age of 10 years. I left my parents to their school, right to dream. So they got used 
of not having me home, you know, because I moved out. So, so they were okay for me to move to England and at least uh, uh, pursue my dreams, you know, because uh, that's what I wanted to do, to move outside Ghana and then, like, you know, achieve my goals in football. So they were happy for me to, to move to England. Did you miss your family when you were in England? I did sometimes miss them a lot because uh, I was in England with uh, my friends, Isaac Shaz, David Akam, Thomas Boachi, and then uh, Abdul Waris. We were in the same school. So we've known each other since from the academy back in Ghana. So we're like a family, you know. So I do miss my family sometimes, though, but because I have them around me, it makes everything easier for me to, to be happy, you know, because we're also family. You know, so it was okay. I did not miss my family that much, though. But then, 2011, you moved to Sweden and Östersund. Uh, how was it the first time in Östersund? The first time in Östersund was uh, it was interesting, though, because uh, it was in June, around June or July, around there. The best part of it. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. The weather was was perfect. You know, and the sun was showing everywhere, everywhere, and I I, I was okay. You know, and we had a week trials and the sun was up and we played against Wigan. I think they came here for pre-season training mm -hmm. from England. So we played against them and that game uh, I did really good. That's when uh, Graham Potter decided to, to sign me and as a child. So it was good. That, that year, it was perfect year for, for us to come to Sweden. Not in the winter time though, but in the <laughs> summer time, so yeah. But now you, you think winter is okay? Yeah, now I think uh, it's okay because uh, I'm used to the winter now. So, and uh, I'm gonna be here for the rest of my life because my family are from uh, Bloomfield. So, I'm gonna be here for <laughs> I don't know when though. <laughs> so yeah. After three season here, you moved to Örebro uh, for two years. How was that? Yeah, me moving to Örebro was uh, something that I was not expecting because uh, I, I love working with Grand Potter. You know, uh, it's like my dad. You know, mm -hmm. so. I don't want to go away from him, you know. And uh, Olibro came in. They they called my, my agent, and then my agent called me, and he was like, look, Olibro is interested in you, and uh, they they want you. And uh, for me, I love this club, and and uh, I spoke to Graham about it. You know, I was like, Graham, this is the, the issue now, and like uh, for me, I would like to uh, try uh, in different team, and... Uh, and try different level and see how how it goes for me. You know, by then we were playing Sparetta and our old brother was playing in uh, Azvenska. So I spoke to Graham and it was like, you know, he would love to keep me here, you know, but if this is what I want to do, uh, then he, he will not stop me. He will just let me go and then go and try and see how it goes. So I was happy to talk to him before leaving, you know, that gave him more like confidence that he still believed in me. You know, and he wanted to stay so badly, but because of this chance, he will not stop the chance. You know, so he he said I can go and and then I see how it goes. So that's why I went to Oribro to sign two years with them, and I went there. Things were not not good, you know, because I I got injured twice and I did surgery, so uh, I was not playing that much, you know. And I guess it's football sometimes. You go to a club and everything is new around you, and you feel like you you, you don't belong in, in in this place. You know you don't belong in this family. That's the way I was feeling in in, in Oribro. And uh, Graham called me again on on the phone when my contract finished with Oribro, and he said he, he want me back in Ostasun because he knows what kind of player I am and what I can do for for the club. You know, so he rang me and I. He asked me to come back, and I, I was just surprised, you know. And at the same time, I was I was happy, you know, to come back home because Ostasun feel like my second home. You know, so when he, he rang me that he want me back, I was so happy, and I was like, thanks a lot for giving me, me another opportunity to to come and show, you know, what I can do for for this club and to to come and then be part of this lovely lovely club. So I was excited to to come back to Ostasun. Born in Ghana, raised in England, and now in Sweden. Uh, what countryman are you? I think for me, I, I'm, I'm everywhere, you know, everywhere in the world, I, I would say, you know. I was born in Ghana and then uh, 
grow up in uh, England, I would say, and moving towards the zone to to play football uh, professionally. You know, that's what I wanted to do when I was young. So for me, anywhere you end up in, you just have to do your best. You know, it's life, you know, because it, it was difficult in Ghana to be a professional in Ghana. is It's difficult because there's no money in the league in Ghana and and it's, it's difficult, you know. So for me to get the opportunity to move to Europe, uh, I was so happy because uh, I know personally that my parents would not get that money to send me to Europe, you know. Although we have money for food and taking care of the house and everything, but to send me to Europe, it would be difficult for my, my parents. So when Right to Dream gave me that opportunity to move to Europe, I was so happy. I was, I was, I don't know what to do to myself. I was like, oh, wow, I'm going to Europe, you know, to to do what I love to do, to play football and to go to school at the same time. So it was perfect uh, timing for me to move to Europe. Tell me a little about your family here in Östersund. My family here in Östersund. Uh, I have my girlfriend and uh, my little daughter. Uh, her name is Kayla, and my girlfriend's name is uh, Erica. And uh, her family is from uh, Brunflo, uh, but she lives in uh, Östersund. So we met in Östersund when I moved back from uh, Oruro. We met in Östersund, and then uh, we, we started dating, and then that's how everything started, and now we have a a uh, beautiful little girl and she's my everything you know yeah. <laughs> so yeah uh, it's uh yeah we are good and uh, uh it's a new family you know so we start in the family now so of course it's gonna be difficulty sometimes and all that but i don't make things are good and we are happy living together with our, our little girl and like doing things together so yeah and they have been in ghana yeah we went to ghana uh, last christmas to visit my my family because they they wanted to see my girlfriend and my little girl, you know. So it was good that we went to Ghana and they met my my family. My family were so happy to to see them as well, and especially Kayla, you know. Mm. So yeah, it was a it was a great time. What language do you speak at home with Kayla? With Kayla, I, I speak English and uh, sometimes a bit of Ghanaian language, you know. And uh, my girlfriend speaks Swedish to 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 her, so. Uh, I'm trying to speak a bit of Ghana language because uh, when she grew up, of course, she will go to Ghana. She will visit mm. Ghana and, uh, so that she'll be able to speak to people in Ghana, you know, so that they know that, yeah, okay, half of her parents are from Ghana, you know, so it's good that she can understand a bit of Ghana language as well. And I'm going to try my best to make sure she, she understands and she can speak a bit when she grew up. You're a, professional, you're a professional football player. What do you do when you're not playing football? Before I had, uh, we had uh, Kayla, uh, after training, I go home and uh, uh, I look a lot on uh, YouTube or movies from Ghana because uh, I do miss Ghana a lot sometimes. So that keeps me going until I met my, my girlfriend and we had Kayla and now anytime I go home, I always around with my my girl and like you know playing around and all that so that's what i do when uh, i don't football or when i don't train or without a game i'm always home with my little girl if she don't have school or something then you're turning 31 uh, in may How okay long? you you keep saying i'm turning 31 <laughs> 31 31 31 yeah i know i'm turning 31 <laughs> everybody's gonna grow <laughs> no. how long do you gonna play football do you think I'm turning 31, as you said. <laughs> so yeah, as I said earlier on in the interview, that uh, I'm gonna play until my body says no. You know, but once I'm fit and I can run, then why not? Uh, <laughs> I will play until then. So what do you want to do after your playing career? Uh, actually, uh, what I wanna do is uh, to be a personal trainer. So last year. Uh, I did uh, the course in a uh, sports gym. I did a course in a sports gym and uh, and I qualified as a personal trainer. So that's something that I want to do. I want to still be around the sports, you know, around football, especially like to be a personal trainer in a football club or in, in a gym. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm looking forward for that after my football career because I still want to work around the, the game. So yeah. 
Right now, the, the world is upside down uh, with the coronavirus. Uh, are you afraid of this? This virus is very uh, difficult one, you know, uh, and it's, it's very sad because uh, people are dying and, 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 and all that. And uh, for me personally, every morning I watch the news and my girlfriend's like, ah, when are you going to stop watching the news? But I said, uh, I said to her that I love to see what is happening in the world, you know, because uh, for me it's very sad, you know, to see people passing away and, and all that. And uh, it can happen to anyone. You know, so it's sad right now. It's very sad. And, uh, it's a difficult situation for everyone. It is difficult. It is difficult, you know, and uh, nobody knows what's going to happen tomorrow, you know, and uh, I just keep praying that I wake up one day and I want to hear from the news that things are going better now, you know, things are getting better and, and all that. That's my wish that mm -hmm. I'm wishing for every day when I go to bed, you know. Because it's very difficult for everyone in the world, you know. It's not only one part, but it's everyone. How's your family in Ghana? Yeah, I, I spoke to them uh, two days ago, and uh, as, especially my my parents. They are they are old. My mom is seventy four, and my dad is seventy six. You know, so they are they are old, and uh, and this virus can, you know, get them so easily, and then we don't know what's gonna happen. So I said to them that look, just stay home, you know. And I do send them money every month to take care of, of themselves and all that because they're not working anymore. And uh, I said to them, stay home, don't go anywhere. If you need anything, just let me know. I will call one of my brothers and or my sisters and then they can help you guys out, you know. But the best thing you can do for me is just to stay home because I know that they are old, you know. So, and the virus is in Ghana now, it's in everywhere, I, I would say, it's in everywhere. So they just have to be, be safe. and. Yeah. Alstranskan is postponed for two months. How is this for you as a football player? You want to play games. I want to play games, but because of what is happening, you know, uh, you don't really feel like playing, you know, because you want everybody to, to feel good. You want everybody to, to feel strong, you know, and this is happening and we want to play football is something that is not in my, in my head right now, you know, because what is happening is up there. Mm -hmm. And football is there, so my my opinion, I'm not ready to to play whilst this is going on, you know. And I know some of the players are are the same as well because this is very sad, you know. And football should be the last thing to come into our head or my head as a footballer, you know, until this thing is is gone for good. Then yeah, you feel that like, yeah, now I wanna play football again and enjoy. It. But now I don't feel. My head is right for, for football because every single day I'm going to think about people, you know, especially the old people and stuff, you know. So for me, it's, it's sad that things are like this. But I just have to keep praying that like one day everything will be fine again and then we can go back to, to football and make the fans happy again because, of course, they are the people that push Ostasun Football Club to where it is now. Without the fans, then there's no Ostasun Football Club. So I would take this opportunity to say to the fans that they should be patient with uh, with everything that is happening and and they should stay home, safe for, for us as well, footballers. And we wish we'll come out very soon to to play football for them to watch and enjoy, you know, because footballs make the city big, you know, and. Uh, for me, I'm so proud to be part of this history and what is happening in this in this city, you know. And I just have to just keep praying that everything stops and we come out and enjoy football again for the fans to, to watch. So yeah. Thank you very much, Sam, for listening to you. You're welcome. Anytime. <laughs>